Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And today I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak your fourth generation Apple TV on tvOS 13 up to even the latest version 13.2. And this will work for future yeah. updates yeah. as well. Now this is a Checkrain based jailbreak. So huge shout out to Hacker Nitto TV who has done a ton of work around this. And also of course, Luca Tedesco, Axiom X and everyone else who has helped the Checkrain development team and has collaborated with them on this project. So big props to them. Now you might be wondering, why would you want to jailbreak your Apple TV? Essentially, why would you want to jailbreak your iOS device? For customization, obviously. There are packages that you can install on your Apple TV that essentially open up additional functionality. For instance, you can get Kodi on your Apple TV and hopefully we should receive a number of new third-party packages as well in light of this permanent jailbreak. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is going to work on future versions of tvOS as well for the lifetime of the device. As long as Apple supports this thing, it's going to be jailbroken. And again, it does include support for the Apple TV fourth generation, but not the Apple TV 4K yet. That's the fifth generation Apple TV, and it is powered by a processor that is susceptible to the primary Checkmate exploit utilized by Checkrain. It has an A10X CPU, but the big problem with that is it doesn't actually have a USB-C port. So there is talk that potentially we could receive a jailbreak for that at some point, but uh, yeah, just be sure to subscribe and I will keep you guys in the loop once we know more on that front. Now, what you're going to need is access to a computer. At this point, you do need a Mac. Eventually, this might make its way over to Windows, so stay tuned for details on that, but you do need a Mac. You also need your power cable. You're going to need a USB Type-C cable to connect to the back of your Apple TV, and of course, you're going to need the proper I.O. to connect it to your computer, whether it's USB-C to A or USB-C to C based on which Apple computer you have. And then of course, you're also going to need an HDMI cable and you're going to have to do this close to a TV or at least a monitor where you're going to connect your device so that way you can get everything set up and move through the on-screen prompts that way. So with that said, let's go ahead and just get straight into this. I'm gonna have one link down below in the description for you guys and it's just going to be the official Checkrain site. And uh, for now, it's basically just utilitarian. It just has the download link, that's it. So we're going to click on where it says download. This may look different for you based on when you're watching this video. If you're looking at it at a future point in time, then they might have updated it with additional graphics and assets. But you're just going to look for the main download on that page. Once you do have it downloaded, it's going to come in a disk image format or .dmg. You're just going to mount it by double clicking it and you're going to drag it over into your applications folder. Now, if you already have Checkrain installed, maybe you jailbroke on your iOS device, then you're going to just hit replace. And uh, once it does replace it, you're going to open your applications folder and you're going to launch up Checkrain. But you'll notice that the first time we do open it, you're going to receive this message right here. It's going to say Checkrain cannot be opened because the developer cannot be verified. This is just a default system message that Apple puts in place when you download things from the internet. It's letting you know that, hey, this was obtained online. You might wanna check to make sure that it's free of malware. Of course, Checkrain definitely is. So we can click cancel. And what we need to do is basically authenticate that. So we have to launch the system preferences app and then we're going to go to security and privacy and we're going to click where it says open anyway followed by open again to the prompt and now we can open Checkrain. Remember, open it from the applications folder. Now, this version of Checkrain looks a little bit different than the one for iOS. Up at the top, it says that it is for tvOS, and this is the first release candidate. Now, because we replaced the Checkrain app for iOS, the next time you wanna boot your iOS device tethered, you're going to have to re-download Checkrain and or just keep a copy in your applications folder under a different name because the two are not compatible with one another. They are two separate utilities at least least for now by the same name. So let's go ahead and connect our Apple TV to our computer and also a power source. I have mine right here and I'm just going to connect it to USB-C. And once it is connected, it should pop up inside of Checkrain momentarily. You can see here that it says Apple TV 4 running tvOS 
13.2. So it has confirmed that this Apple TV is in fact running the latest version of tvOS. And what we're going to do is just hop on over to our Apple TV. We're going to scroll down to settings general, and I'm going to show you guys that again, this thing is in fact running 13.2. So inside of settings general about for tvOS version, it does confirm 13.2. Okay, so let's go back to the home screen on the Apple TV. And now inside of check rain on our computer, we're just going to hit start. Now you do have the option to enable verbose boot. However, in my testing, I found that this can actually persist through the boot into the actual interface and the springboard itself. And you receive random scrolling text throughout. So we're not going to boot with this option checked at least right now. And before I begin, I also wanted to say that make sure you're connecting your device near a TV. I actually even have mine already plugged in to HDMI so I can see what's going on. And so we can go through the prompts once we do receive them on the device itself. So whether you have a laptop or whether you need to plug your desktop in temporarily near your TV, then you're going to have to just do that and then you can continue. So let's go ahead and hit start inside of Checkrain. It's going to send the device into recovery mode after we click on next. And uh, once you're in recovery mode, then we need to enter DFU mode. So grab your Apple TV remote. All right, so now that we have our remote, what we're going to do is just hold down the menu and pause play buttons together for seven seconds. You can hit start inside of the interface and uh, follow along with that, or you can just do it on your own, but hold down those two buttons simultaneously and you'll know it's been seven seconds. Once the light starts flashing more rapidly, then you can release the two buttons and you'll see here it says DFU mode entered successfully. Now it's going through the boot process. It already finished exploitation. So this is incredibly fast here on the fourth gen Apple TV. And uh, once it does actually go through this, it's going to boot back up into tvOS, but it should start installing after you disconnect USB-C from your computer. So you're going to need to do that, but wait until it says done inside of the Checkrain interface. This is why I wanted you guys to connect it to HDMI in advance. So now that it says all done, we can go ahead and disconnect from USB-C. And if you don't see anything on your TV or whatever HDMI you have connected to it, then just go ahead and disconnect HDMI and reconnect it. But uh, mine did pop up. And now you can see here that after we wait for a little bit, it's going to pop up with Checkrain RC1 installer, Checkrain Release Candidate 1 installer. Just give it some time, don't unplug it. You're just going to be at the device's springboard. Remember, like I said, you do need to be connected to HDMI so that way you can see the progress and also respring once it asks you to. So just wait for this to complete. All right, and so now that it's finished, it says that we can respring. So you're just going to push in on your Apple TV remote in the main selection area, and it's just going to respring the device. Okay, so here we are. It says Nitto, and this is going to put us inside of the Nitto TV app. And this is essentially the Cydia equivalent for tvOS. This is your third-party package manager. It's going to be how you install everything. And right off the bat, it pops up with this message saying legacy block settings. Legacy update block settings were detected. Would you like to update to the new proper method? This will install the tvOS beta profile to prevent OTA updates from working, even if the jailbreak is inactive. So so to do this, we can just swipe up and then tap into update settings. And you can also change that if you just swipe up all the way to the top and then over to settings, you can see software updates disabled or enabled. So we're just going to keep them at disabled and then go back. And I'm going to go to updates and show you guys exactly how you install updates here. So let's go over to updates again, and we're going to go down to update all and then yes. And it's just going to go out, download the package, install it and it's either going to ask you to respring or reload and it'll just put us back after it reloads all applications. It'll put us back into the Nitto TV interface here. All right, here we are, we're back now and we can just go ahead and press the menu button to go back and I'm gonna show you guys how to install Kodi now. So just click on it and then click on install install again, or you can add it to the queue if you want additional packages. But this is it, guys. How awesome is this? We are now jailbroken. Like I said toward the beginning of this video, hopefully more developers will come onto the jailbreak scene for tvOS. We really need some more devs to come on to 
create awesome packages and give us even more reasons to jailbreak. Personally, I want to see SparkDev bring over Snowboard. I know he teased it a while back, but how awesome would it be to be able to theme your Apple TV? All right, so here we go. You can see that it says success, respring required. So we can go ahead and click in on the remote to respring. And once it's back at the springboard, I'm gonna show you guys Cody on the fourth gen Apple TV, jailbroken on tvOS 13.2. This is a fairly easy process, but do also remember that anytime your device reboots, so for instance, if you do lose power and it turns off and you have to turn it back on, in order to actually use anything, any of your jailbreak stuff, so to speak, including even Nitto TV, you're going to have to reconnect to a computer and run through that process. Again, the exact same jailbreak process, and I'll do that right toward the end of this video just to show you guys and re-familiarize you with the process. But don't worry, even if it does reboot, you can still use everything stock, just not your jailbreak stuff until you boot tethered again. So you can see that once we swipe down here after the remote is connected, Let's go ahead and swipe down. Now we do have Cody. So we can open it up and we can add any of our sources there and we can go through it that way. But uh, yeah guys, Cody on the fourth gen Apple TV. So cool. And let's go back to the home screen again. And I'm just going to reboot by holding down the TV button and also the menu button together until we receive the flashing lights and it's just going to reboot. And uh, essentially, like I said, once it puts us back onto our springboard, we're not gonna be able to use anything related to the jailbreak until we boot tethered once more. All right, here we are on the springboard, and as you can see, when we scroll down, we neither have Cody nor Nitto TV. Don't worry, we need to essentially boot tethered. So once again, get this all set up near where you wanna use your Apple TV. You're gonna to have to connect three things, HDMI, power, and USB-C to your computer. So I'm connecting USB-C right now once more, and we need to launch up the CheckRain application if you happen to close out of it, or if you're doing this at a future point. Now, once it recognizes the Apple TV, click start, followed by next, and it's going to send the device into recovery mode. And you can follow along, of course, with the prompts inside of CheckRain. So let's go ahead and hold those buttons down, remember, for seven seconds, and notice the LED after that seven seconds is up. So let's go ahead and release the buttons, and you can see that it has entered DFU mode successfully. It might take a few tries, but it's super, super easy. It's much easier than entering DFU mode on an iOS device. So now it is booting. Let's go ahead and wait for that. Now it says all done. So we can click done inside of CheckRain, disconnect the USB cable, and congratulations, you've just booted tethered. You need to do that any single time your device powers off and or you lose power. It's not an untethered jailbreak and it does not persist. It is a semi-tethered jailbreak which is great because you can still use your Apple TV in the event of a power loss after it comes back up, but you're just going to have to boot tethered to use any of your jailbreak stuff, so to speak. All right, so now that we are on the home screen again, let's go ahead and connect the remote just by hitting a button and scroll down, and you can see, there we go. We have Nitto TV and we have Cody once more because we are now in our jailbroken state. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know down below in the comments section what you're most excited about now that you have a jailbroken Apple TV, and uh, stay tuned for more awesome Apple TV jailbreak content. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.